Today we have some stories of some absolutely vile entitled parents. We'll get into those in a bit, but first, my brother and sister-in-law put my unknowing teenage niece into a lifetime of debt. My bro and sister-in-law are extremely irresponsible with money to the point that they've already been bankrupt twice and are working on number three right now, and it just hasn't been enough years yet since the last time. They both owe over $150,000 in student loan and credit cards, plus they owe more on their home than it's worth, because they take out every cent of equity they gain immediately saying they're going to pay off debt with it, but blow it on more impulsive luxury buys. They have three kids, the oldest is 18 and in college. I just found out that they took out massive student loans in the kid's name exclusively, way beyond what was necessary and they blew it on themselves. They already scammed the kid out of her life savings last summer, buying her a car, but they pulled a switch on her by purchasing a manual transmission that she doesn't know how to drive. I know they did it on purpose because my bro wanted the new car for himself and said it was a fair trade to give her the old beat up ugly minivan instead, but didn't give her the money she put up for the new car back. The in-laws set up a college fund for her as a small child, and every holiday instead of gifts, money was put in. When it came time to use the money, she discovered it was all gone. They spent it all behind her back, and she had no idea until she needed it and found out. I just found out that they got her deep into student loan debt way beyond what she needed, and she hasn't even started her second year yet. They thought Biden was going to forgive $20,000, so they went and blew through it thinking it's free money. This poor kid has no idea the magnitude of what they've done to her long term. They screwed up their own lives and finances beyond repair, and just couldn't resist taking advantage of their own kid by putting her deep in the hole, where she'll never be able to pay it off, or will be trying to for the rest of her life. The career path she's pursuing is not a high-earning job, so she's already going to struggle with supporting herself on her own after college. I don't think she knows how much debt is being racked up in her name, and if she decides to quit school or choose another path, she'll be stuck with a huge payment regardless. Tuition is super cheap, as she stayed in state so they could have easily have paid out of pocket and avoided putting her into the same situation they're in. I am disgusted at the level of entitlement they have to literally rob their own kid out of every cent she had which wasn't much to begin with, then proceeded to sentence her to massive debt for life on top of it so they can keep spending frivolously on everything from eating out every meal, new tech gadgets, trips, two new cars for themselves, clothes and home decor, etc. They owe my parents tens of thousands for all the bailouts to save their house from foreclosure several times. It would take all day to go over all the rotten, greedy, entitled things they do, but screwing over your own kid is next level. And they have two more kids to take advantage of coming up besides. Although I feel terrible for the first kid, and they definitely do not deserve to get treated any way like that and yeah, they're likely screwed for at least a very long time, I hope they're aware of it enough to create enough of a stink to save their other siblings from going through the exact same treatment. It's kind of depressing when these parents see their kids as not much more than just collateral to be able to get even more money in loans. These people honestly need professional help with the amount of money in loans they're taking out. There's clearly some kind of like disconnect here, right? Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of hearing about these entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, my aunt bullcraps me and thinks she can freak me up with 3 euros an hour. My aunt hired me to work for her as a helper. I'm 12, but I consented, my worst idea, and pays me 3 euros an hour and wants me to sweep the entire place, about 500 meters cubed, clean her setup and tools, wash the dishes, prepare for the clients, and go shop for her to name a few. And when I asked for at least 50 cents more, she told me to shush and I yelled at her, but that bench wouldn't budge. She called my dad and I got sent home and won't even get paid for today. I've worked for three days now. Who's in the wrong? I mean, I know it's just sweeping and whatnot, but yeah, three euros an hour feels a little light even for a 12 year old. And when you take in the fact that it was 500 meters of ground that you're covering, which for our American friends is over 1600 feet, I know whether I was 12 years old or the Olympic sweeping champion, it would take me a little bit to do and I definitely want more than 3 euros an hour. 
If anything, I think this is a good learning lesson for OP. Negotiate what you're worth, and if they're not paying you that, you walk away. Our next story is, I almost got my Legos stolen at Legoland. So today I posted on here for the first time today. If you want to read it, you can go to my post history. And it made me remember some other stories, so here's one of them. Over I think fall break one year, my parents took my brother and I to Legoland. I was and still am a huge Lego fan. Anyway, at the time, Ninjago was a huge deal, and I got Jay and Garmadon minifigs and brought them to breakfast to play with. For more info, the breakfast was only for people staying in the hotel, and they would use large 2x2 Lego bricks to mark which tables were taken. Now, I sat down with my two minifigs, and the restaurant was a buffet, so I got up shortly after my parents and left my minifigs at the table. I don't know why I did this. So I get my breakfast and come back to see people sitting at our table. My parents call me over and tell me they took our table. So I tell them I left my minifigs there and we ask them if they have them. And they say that they didn't see them even though I remembered I put them in front of me and they weren't there. I accused them of being thieves. I was eight or nine at the time. And the mother at the table said that if I wanted to keep my stuff, I should have kept it with me. They didn't even bother to look for them. A staff member tried to keep the peace and asked me which set they were in order to try to get me a new one. Shout out to him. Anyways, we eventually sat back down and the staff member had a talk with a family when they magically found the characters under the table. Not only that, but they also weren't staying at the hotel, which was a big no-no and got kicked out. I hope when 8 or 9 year old OP walked up and said, hey, did you see my minifigs? Where are they? They felt a pit of remorse and guilt in their stomachs for trying to steal from a kid. I mean, who else do they think left it there? Obviously, they must have felt some level of guilt to fess up and say, oh, we found it under the table. This next story is, a mother grabbed me at Disney. I'm not so sure this fits here, but I'll post it anyway. When I was in elementary school, probably first or second grade for those not in the US, I was six to eight years old, my grandparents had saved enough money to take me, my brother, mom, dad, cousin, aunt, uncle, and themselves to Disney World as a family trip for a couple of days. They are awesome, I know. One day we went to this Finding Nemo thing where you could take a picture in the shark's mouth, and I think you could do other things there. I didn't know that it was for pictures and went to the shark's mouth next to this woman and her young, probably four-year-old daughter. Now, instead of tapping me on the shoulder and asking me to move, she grabbed my arm, dragged me away, I was in tears at this point, and when my parents saw her and came over to me, I explained what happened crying and she said something like, he shouldn't have attacked me and my daughter. Keep in mind, I was young and had just walked over to the shark's mouth. Anyway, after that, there was an argument and we just ended up leaving the building. Honestly, it's so annoying and kind of upsetting that there would be entitled people acting that way at Disney. I mean, it's supposed to be a place where you're having a blast as a kid, you know, it's supposed to be the happiest place on earth. And now, because of this jerk, probably oftentimes when you think of Disney World, you think of this lady grabbing you and pulling you off to the side and traumatizing your 6 to 8 year old self. This next story is, mom sells my stuff to buy Christmas presents for dad without using his money. Okay, I have an entitled mom, she does things her way and devil take the hindmost, but this story is really the first couple of times I realized she was entitled. I had been a novice guitar player and while I enjoyed it, I wasn't a fast learner. Still, I had an acoustic guitar that I dearly loved. Then one day I didn't have an acoustic guitar. Why? Here's how my mom explained it. I hate to take dad's money to buy him a Christmas present, so I sold your guitar. After all, you weren't using it. Uh, yeah, right. I practiced every day, except on days when my other passions, the Boy Scouts, comic books, etc., got in the way. I'd even been talking about starting a band and practicing in our basement. Do you begin to see another motive for selling my guitar when I wasn't looking? Not surprisingly, though it was a surprise at the time, she refused to replace my guitar when I told her I wanted it back. Another example, not quite so clear-cut, but still, backstory. My dad served in the Navy in the Pacific during World War II, and as a souvenir, he brought back a Japanese army rifle, an Arasaka. Now, I knew even as a teenager that dad didn't see land combat, so he must have bought the rifle from a marine or a soldier, but still, it was a rifle and therefore way cool. I'd started shooting targets while in the scouts at summer camp, and I quickly realized I had a gift for that. 
I later went on to shoot on the college rifle team, so yeah, I was good. And as the only son, I figured the rifle would be mine when I turned 18. But no, one day I found the rifle gone, and yeah, mom sold it to buy dad a Christmas present. But not with his money. She didn't work out of the home, so she earned no money of her own. One final story about Entitled Mom. When I went off to college, I did two things. I bought a reel-to-reel tape recorder, at that time this was state of the art, and copied all of my extensive collection of records onto tape because they were easier to store in a dorm room. I left my albums at home, but I hadn't abandoned them until my mom sold them without asking. And these I'd bought myself. There wasn't even the excuse that I bought you your guitar so it's mine to sell if I want. When I found this out, I went ballistic. Then a horrific thought hit me and I raced up to my room and my comic book collection was gone. You're too old to collect comics, she explained. Then again noted that this was the only way she could afford to buy dad a birthday present without using his money. Now sure, these were well-read comics, but still I had the first and first hundred or so Fantastic Four comics, the first and first hundred or so Spider-Man comics, the first, well, you get the picture. Even well-read comics, if they date back to the origins of Marvel as a comic powerhouse during the Stan Lee and Jack Kirby days, are worth thousands or more today. But only if you actually still own them. <sighs> Did I mention that mom died a multi-millionaire? But she made sure that us kids got nothing. Most of her estate went to St. Jude's, a good charity. But with her wealth, sharing even a small percentage of that wealth would have still left St. Jude's with many millions. But as the song goes, and, sh- and she's buying her way to heaven, or so it seems to me. It almost seems fitting that somebody who so willingly sells off other people's things to have money to buy things, when passing away and having money to leave behind, makes sure that they leave nothing behind for their loved ones. I mean, it's hard to feel too guilty when you know that all of it went to St. Jude's, which is a great charity to send that money to, but you're really left feeling like, what would have been so terrible if I had a small fortune? Our next story is, crazy entitled neighbor freaks out about me watching her kids. So a bit of background first, I broke my ankle back in May. I've never broken anything before, and I managed to break my bone in two places. So healing has been slow and new to me. I was told I needed to keep my foot up to avoid swelling, and frankly, you didn't have to tell me twice, as putting my ankle down to the ground level felt like all my blood came rushing back and it was going to explode and so it was super painful for a while. I'm getting to the stage where it finally no longer hurts to sit up normally with my foot on the ground, and thank God because I'm beyond tired of laying down. I can really only exist in two places in my home comfortably now, my bed and our couch. But moving me from the bed to the couch is a lot for both me and my boyfriend. So we only do it on weekends, and I work from home in bed during the week. So since I'm tired of laying down and now in a phase where I should be working on movement with my ankle, I've been sitting on the edge of my bed for a bit every day to eat, work, move my foot, etc. At my side of the bed is a giant window and my boyfriend opens the window daily for me so I can enjoy the sunlight. So today I'd been doing things as normal, sitting on the edge of the bed to work and just enjoying the summer sun. I live in a condo building so a lot of times kids will play outside in the parking area and I hear them so much, not super loudly by any means, that I just zone them out when I work. I can see them sometimes but most of the time they're over in an area I can't really see from my window. My boyfriend had just gotten back from the grocery store, and he was definitely not in the best mood since the air conditioning on the car stopped working and it was painfully hot outside. He was mumbling to himself about having to go outside when it's a bit cooler out and take a look at it when we heard a petty aggressive knock on the door. Everything from this point forward is my boyfriend's retelling me the story since I was in the bedroom and not near the door. As soon as he opens the door, she goes off instantly. You need to tell that woman to stop staring at my kids, it's creepy. My boyfriend finds this incredibly hilarious, even though he has no idea what in the world she's talking about, and his first reaction was to immediately laugh and just respond, what? 
as best as he can through him losing it. She did not like this reaction and started on a tangent saying things along the lines of, it's weird for her to be sitting there and staring out the window during the day, and that she, me, needs to come out here and explain herself. And if I didn't come out there and apologize and stop, she would report me for being creepy. And how my boyfriend was likely equally as creepy. My boyfriend was over this as fast as it started. And once he could pull himself together, informed her that I could not come to the door and she needed to stop jumping to weird conclusions. Of course, she asks why I don't have time to come to the door but plenty of time to stare at kids. He tells her I'm sitting on the edge of the bed like that because I'm stuck in the bed due to a broken ankle and I can't walk. And she starts to go off about not believing him. He simply shuts the door in her face. He said she knocked on the door on and off over the next hour before giving up. A little later, my boyfriend walked outside to deal with the car air conditioning and decided to look into the window I was sitting in front of. He said, you can see me, but you need to get pretty close and I'm clearly looking down most of the time. And when I have my laptop in my hand, you can clearly see the top of it. He said it's more creepy that she came this close to the window to watch me. She hasn't come back again, and I hope she never does. We have window shades that slide down from the bottom and top, so we decided to switch them so this weird lady can't look inside. Just a bit sad because I did enjoy having the trees visible in the background while I worked. Honestly, I feel bad for OP that this weird, creepy lady ruined things for OP. I think it honestly might be worth it to get some reflective window coating. There's the stuff that you can put on the inside or maybe the outside, where at least during the daytime it would reflect the light so it would look like a mirror. Although, maybe that would convince this lady that you were creeping even harder, I don't know. Our next story is, important update on my situation. At approximately 1am I was brushing my teeth as I'd struggled to gather the motivation to do it earlier, and the house was relatively peaceful as my mother was asleep and nobody else was here. But my dad came home with my sister to bring her back from work, and he started knocking on the door. I was annoyed and didn't open, as I just wanted to finish brushing my teeth. Massive mistake. My father was at the door, and when he saw that I was brushing my teeth and that my phone was there, he went ballistic. He kicked me in the butt while demanding that I plug my phone in and threatening to break it on my head. After I put it down, I was ordered to finish brushing my teeth in the kitchen, So I obeyed. Strike two. I was in a corner, which ultimately led to my dad cornering me and yelling at me over me not brushing my teeth fast, my math grade, as well as him trauma dumping for countless minutes. His screaming intensified and got more violent, starting to throw punches and kicks at me while hollering death threats at me if I didn't pass my summer class. After approximately 10 minutes of being threatened, this nut show ended. I finished brushing my teeth and went to my bed, having a panic attack in the process, as I didn't know what to do. Strike out. My father then went into my room to continue screaming at me. By now it was 1.30am, I was struggling to hold it together, and I was ready to beat the heck out of him and run out to never come back. He continued to trauma dump and hit me with a cloth before finally leaving. Arrogantly enough, he said goodnight, which I ignored. That ticked him off, as he said I said goodnight in a furious voice. I just said a faint goodnight as I was struggling to breathe and fathom what the heck I was just subjected to. This morning, he acted as if absolutely nothing happened, which particularly infuriated me, as I was unable to sleep for more than 4 hours and still had painfully high heart rate, which I still do as of writing this. I've since filed a report with the police, and I'm hoping something happens soon. I don't feel safe at all, so any help would be appreciated, whether it be advice or a word of kindness. Thank you for reading this. So OP I think is obviously doing the right thing by reporting them to the authorities. I'm just confused why, if OP shared everything that was going on, why they're taking so long. This shouldn't be something that like they need to do like casework on or build up to. They should be like swinging by as soon as they possibly can. Our next story is, do people expect fast food workers to know their political opinions? So I work under the golden arches, and a few days ago, someone left us a review that went like this. And I'm not sure if this belongs here or somewhere like r slash choosing beggars, so let me know if this belongs to a different sub. Dissatisfied. My order number was AK-17, and I was told that was a good number because of AK-47 rifle. In this current political environment, 
and as an outdoorsman and hunter, I found it pretty tone deaf in light of the current political environment and Republican congressmen calling for war. As an outdoorsman and hunter, I found it pretty tone deaf in light of the current political environment and Republican congressmen calling for war. I don't know if it was OP making a mistake and repeating a sentence, or if it was just in this review inexplicably, but I think we can all agree that this is one of those reviews you get on one of those websites that anybody looking at it would essentially take that and just mentally throw it in the bin. Can you just tell me if like the workers were friendly and like if the food came out fast or was good? I don't really care about the political environment relating to your order number. Our next story is, my entitled mother and her girlfriend are pushing my little sibling to their breaking point. They'll end up like me. I, trans male 16, have two bio siblings, 14 non-binary and 8 year old boy. My parents are getting divorced and my mom has a girlfriend that gave birth to a baby earlier this year. We live with our mom and her girlfriend, mainly because my dad is a truck driver, so he can't support us and his girlfriend lives far away and has five kids. Now, me and my sibling, 14, we'll call O, have been taking care of my mom and our stepbrother, three to five months old. We get up early, take turns throughout the day with the baby, and our mother cooks, cleans, and watches my little brother, etc. I've recently been noticing O has been sleeping more, crying secretly, and overall, showing signs of being mentally worn out. I've tried to take more of the load off of them by staying home with the baby while they get to go out, when the girlfriend goes shopping, getting up in the morning, having a longer turn, etc., but it's still very stressful. Today, after going to visit one of our cousins, O came to me crying saying how our mother and her girlfriend called her our grandmother. The woman who hurt us, stole a lot of our things, etc., said how they're so lazy and basically called them worthless because the house had the babies and our little brother's toys everywhere. I had to calm them down by us watching something together and reminding them they aren't useless and putting them to sleep. I was, am, very upset because of my mom and my dad doing the same thing to me, calling me worthless, throwing loads of things I can't handle onto me until I broke which caused me to spiral into getting groomed, doing awful things to myself, and lots of mental problems. I don't want O to go through what I went through, so I went to my mom. We got into an argument due to this, and I kept asking them to help O. Obviously, they aren't mentally well, obviously they need a therapist, and if they wait to help just like how they waited for me, they'll see another child in and out of the mental hospital. My mom just said I'm accusing her of being a terrible mother, if the shoe fits, but whatever, and said she'll look into it. The girlfriend was just apologizing over and over and wanting to talk to O, but I didn't allow it, mainly because I don't want them cornered by two adults. Now I'm looking even harder for a job so I can put aside trying to move out quickly and pay for my sibling's therapist and anything else they need. I'm so tired of this and O is too. This is a cycle and I'm tired of following it. It happened to me and I won't let it happen to O. As much as O irritated me, I love them and I'll help them. I don't want them as bad as me. It sucks knowing that I'll never be mentally okay and be normal. My dad is asleep, but I'm going to try to talk to him, see if at least he'll help them find an online therapist. The bare minimum. I think OP honestly is such a lifesaver for O. It's obviously terrible that OP had to grow up experiencing that and even still has to experience that tangentially through O. It sucks that they have to be there for O in that way to protect them, but at least OP can know that what they're doing is incredibly important and huge for helping O try to navigate through this awful situation. Our next story is, my parents don't like my boyfriend. He hasn't done anything to me and he's never abused me. It's mostly my mother I notice that doesn't like him and my dad really likes my boyfriend but usually plays along with my mother. Why does my mother not like my boyfriend? My boyfriend is 23 and I'm 21, we've been together for 6 years, and I've noticed that my mother seems to not like him, because whenever she's around certain groups of her friends, like her friend asked me, you have a boyfriend? Mother said yes, she does, but we'll see how long that lasts, and smiles at me. I just look at her like, why would you say that? Or another time she said, I don't know why you don't break up with him and go be with other guys, When I was your age, I dated lots of guys before I married your father. You should go and explore the world instead of staying with one man for the rest of your life. I always never say anything, but I always look at her and ask her, why would you say something like that? And she usually never answers me back. 
but I never understand that she pretends to like my boyfriend, especially whenever he started his business and things were going good. She called him randomly and said, If you ever need anything, I'm always here. I know she never usually calls him, but my point is, why doesn't my parents like my boyfriend, especially my mother, and my boyfriend told me, I don't feel appreciated by your parents, I just feel tolerated by them whenever they invite me anywhere or whenever I'm at your house, mostly your mother. I notice she likes to keep to herself with high standards and she doesn't like to be seen in public with people that she thinks are below her, which I know is how she treats me, but I don't care, so... My boyfriend's parents always treated me like their own daughter and always very welcoming of me inside their home and inviting me places with them or calling or messaging me to check on me and they introduced me to their friends and family as their son's wife. Although I'm not married to their son yet, I noticed the difference with how my parents treat my boyfriend and how my boyfriend's parents treat me completely opposite and we always wonder why our parents treat us like that. What is your advice on the situation? I don't know if you can exactly tell for sure what is going on here, I think you'd have to be around them a lot more and understand, like what the inflections and what the behavior patterns are like. Honestly, she could maybe be jealous of your relationship. She might feel like, I wish I had that when I was that young. Or maybe she's possessive of you and doesn't like you being around this person because she feels like it's taking you away from her or taking you out of her control. Honestly, could be a number of things. This next story is, would this piece of news from Brazil fit here? Because I think it would. So basically what happened is that a cop decided to literally, and sorry for the caps lock here, threaten a teacher with a deadly device pointed to his head after he had an argument with his child and all. Now this would be bad enough, even if the kid himself was innocent. But the reason the teacher decided he had to, you know, pull him up to a private conversation and deal with him is the reason the teacher chose to pull him up for a private conversation and reprehend him. The reason, my dear readers, is that he was unironically defending German World War II mindsets during a lecture. That's right, the parent literally had a son defending some of the most disgusting human beings in human history, and an ideology that has killed a crap ton of people and continues to cause harm to this very day and decided that the best course of action is to threaten to arrest the teacher and when that fails, pull a freaking weapon on his head. Also, the teacher was a target of frequent mockery from the students. Not surprising considering how little respect people in Brazil have for teachers. But either way, what do you guys think? Does this little incident fit here? I think it does. This has to be the most primal example of an entitled parent I've ever seen. Most times, you would say a teacher should never argue with a child. They should never, like, get into it with a kid. But I feel like if there was ever a time where you would turn a blind eye, it would be when a kid is defending that German World War II mindset. If anything, you're trying to help them by discouraging that mindset at a younger age. So yeah, I think this is a very primal entitled parent. Our next story is, wanted her to move out, now she wants her new house. When my friend was 19, she lived with her father, stepmother, and half-sister in a four-bedroom house. Her stepmother wanted her to move out and go live with her aunt and uncle so her real daughter can move in. Her daughter's husband left her after she adopted a kid, after finding out she can't have kids. The husband wanted biological children. Her bedroom was going to her stepsister and the fourth bedroom going to the granddaughter. Her aunt and uncle decided to have a custom-made shed transformed into a four-bedroom house. Her aunt and grandmother decorated the house. It's beautiful. I've seen it. Her stepmom saw it and immediately wanted her daughter to have it because she needed her own place and it's too much house for just one person. Her father finally told his wife, no, it's his daughter's house, to leave her alone. Her stepmother was giving her the side eye the entire time during the housewarming party. Here's the thing. Her stepsister never wanted to move in with her. Her stepsister was nice and her father did the same thing, turned a shed into a nice house. Several parishes from her mom. The stepsister and a new job and kid has adjusted well with a new school. My friend's boyfriend's moved in with her. The stepmom stopped bringing up the house. So basically this evil stepmother kicked this person out, so other family turned this shed, 
I'm assuming shed is lost in translation because a four bedroom house out of a shed seems optimistic. Now the evil stepmother sees this new comfy converted shed and is jealous of that and wants that instead. So the evil stepmother went and got somebody else to give them their own converted shed into a four bedroom place. It's just this evil stepmother wanting everything OP has and wanting them far away from anything that the stepmother has. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.